Hi again then guys and welcome to of course another revisiting of a car from Gran Turismo 6, the past of the franchise now, vehicles which I believe have a good chance of coming back in Gran Turismo's future, either potentially in GT Sport, but let's be honest, more likely in, for instance, a GT7 at this point. And we of course have two different Delta Wings in GT6, there's the 2012 black one, the 2013 chrome one, I personally prefer the look of the black one. The chrome one is quicker though, and it's also significantly more powerful. Neither of these cars actually have a huge amount of power. If I recall correctly, I think it's something like, what, 470 horses, I think, on the chrome one, something like that. The weight though is super, super low. But the Delta Wing, to me at least, is a curious car. Now, of course it is to everyone. It's an oddity of racing. It's one of those times where Gran Turismo and Polyphony hone in on peppering throughout the game. Some of these weird, more oddball cars, Chaparrales, Nikes, Jay Leno tank cars, this. But, unlike some of those, you can use this one quite a lot because it is a race car and it's a fast race car. In fact, if I recall correctly, my tune setup for the Chrome version was something like a 270 mile an hour car, which is incredibly quick. And of course, most of that is because of the aerodynamics. You've got that tiny nose cone, which is like nothing in terms of frontal area compared to most race cars, even a prototype. And it has a drag coefficient of just 0.24, which is very, very good. Now, it could be even lower than that, but the reason why it isn't is because it's an open top. And of course, in real life, they later made the hard top or closed cockpit version. But another interesting difference, and this is very easy to miss unless you're specifically thinking about it. There's a very interesting thing that the Delta Wing also doesn't have. And it's kind of counterintuitive because it's something which you would think the Delta Wing would absolutely need, and that would be essential for the car. A spoiler. It doesn't have a wing on the front or the back. It just has the central fin for stability, as all cars at Lamar did, or all prototypes anyway, but there's no wing pushing the car down. How on earth can you have something so inherently unstable, like a big arrowhead, such as the car is, and then have such faith in the project and in the aerodynamics that you don't even give it a spoiler just to be on the safe side. And it's not like it's a fan car. It doesn't have ground effect fans sucking it to the road, as cool as that would be. And yet the crazy thing is, it actually is really fast and really competitive. Now, the way in which the car does get its grip and its downforce comes from the Venturi tunnel underneath the machine as most prototypes would have, but in this car, of course, it's, it's essential, because otherwise you'd have no kind of grip at all. What I will say when using a Delta Wing is, you have to be aware that it's so different, of course, to every other prototype or race car that you're gonna drive in Gran Turismo, because it has this kind of snapping point on the steering. I find the car, and I believe if I recall correctly, I actually left, uh, well, at least one occasion, possibly more in the video where I spun out on the track, and that is important because I wanted to show that because those corners in particular are where you need to watch this car carefully. Because this one, for instance, which is totally stock, at low speeds, it's okay. It's pretty stable. At high speeds, it's also pretty good. You know, you get up to like 260 and you need to apply some special tuning because otherwise the nose starts to get a bit crazy, but it is surprisingly stable, not just for a, an aerodynamic arrowhead, but also because it's so light and having a car that light without a wing could easily just take off. However, it's the middle where you need to watch out. For instance, the chicanes. The chicanes on the Onordier Strait here at Le Mans are where you need to be careful, because midway through those chicanes at like 70, 80 miles an hour, you start to open up the car to exit the chicane and go back onto the straight, and that is when the front end will suddenly have this kind of shimmy and it will go toward the inside of the corner or the outside of the corner, more often than not inside, so oversteer, and it will kind of just suddenly lose control. You try to correct it, but because the front end is so tiny and lightweight, it just flicks, flicks the other way, you lose control. That's fair enough. It just means that you need to know that going in. It requires a, a different skill set, if you will, to use this car. Now, of course, in real life, the car had some controversy. Uh, Panos backed it. I believe Panos actually designed the Delta Wing. Nissan tried to take it for themselves, so Panos sued them, etc. And there are a number of different variants of the car. It was even planned for road use, both with a Panos concept and a Nissan concept. But 
it's a fascinating little car. Of course, it ran in Garage 56. It was famously uh, hit into, I believe, by a Toyota LMP car at Le Mans and sent off track and it couldn't finish the race. But later, it actually competed again at uh, Road Atlanta, which of course is inherently tied to Panos in the ALMS series, also tied to Panos, and it performed really well. It started from the back of the grid and finished fifth of all the cars in the event. And of course that didn't count because it's a Garage 56 entry. And for those who don't know, that's an experimental vehicle. So even if it wins the race, it doesn't count. But it showed the raw potential that the Delta Wing had. Now in terms of this vehicle coming back to Gran Turismo, I absolutely believe that a Gran Turismo 7 title is a far better place to make it return than GT Sport would be. Because we all know exactly where this would go in GT Sport. Let's be honest, Group X, that is exactly what would happen. Of course you couldn't have it in the end classes, I mean it's ridiculously OP for its power, especially this one with even less power than the other model, but they're both very, very interesting, very unique and pretty incredible performance machines. I kind of wish that they'd taken the Delta Wing project a little bit further, but obviously those legal issues, racing changes over the years anyway, etc. For whatever reasons, it kind of just ended. But I think that's a shame, because this and the front-wheel drive Nissan GTR Nismo show that that era had some very interesting kind of experimental options. They both had their issues, of course, but still they're very interesting nonetheless. Of course that appeals to me, being as I am on the channel a huge fan of Unsung Heroes, the entire series dedicated to that. But I believe that the Delta Wing is certainly a car that's worth going back to. And I will say as well, if you haven't played GT6 in some time, and maybe now you're playing GT Sport, AC, Project Cars 2, whatever, such as I am, going back and driving this car again, even with no traction control, no ABS, simulation steering, with a stock tune setup, it's so much easier now to drive a car like this than I remember it being. The performance is incredible. Uh, of course, some people love the car, some people don't. It's the subject of endless jokes for obvious reasons, but I think it's a fascinating idea and I think that cars like this are very important in the motorsport world, even more so, you could say, than in the street world, because this is the kind of idea and the kind of radical concept that could easily just go away, and the average Joe public wouldn't really notice, but those of us who are fans of innovation would certainly miss it. This is the kind of stuff that you'd expect from, like, the 70s Can-Am era, or, you know, some 90s experimental GT1 or something, but the fact that it is much newer than that is reassuring. And as far as the future, of course, there will be other experimental cars. There have been other experimental ones. But the Delta Wing is certainly one of the most famous examples of a Garage 56 car. So tell me your thoughts down below. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? And of course, stick around on the channel for more GT6 content. And of course, all of the other Gran Turismo titles as well. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.